Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I will be your host for today. If you've been joining us, it's been an awesome month so far. Every February, we feature amazing women in science, exploration, and adventure, and conservation. It's been a crazy month so far, and we have a few more events uh, before we wind up the month. So I'm really excited uh, today to be hosting Amanda Cotton. She's a professional photographer specializing in underwater imagery. So she's an avid scuba diver and her goal is to help the general public embrace the beauty below the waves, hopefully raising awareness and concern for uh, what we're doing to our planet, especially our ocean. She's received numerous awards for photography, including the International Photographers Awards, Celebrate the Sea, Underwater Photography, annual awards and many more and her imagery has been featured in many publications and news sources such as National Geographic, BBC, Discovery, uh, CNN and Scuba Diving Magazine to name a few. So Amanda it is always great when we can steal a little bit of your time. We're excited to see a few of your images and hear a few stories and then of course we'll let the students fire away with some questions. Perfect. Well yeah thank you for having me back. I'm actually I'm really excited. We I haven't been I haven't joined you guys for a while, so it's exciting to be able to share some updates of what's been going on over the last couple of years and some new images too, which is really cool. All so, right, sounds good to me. I remember a few years ago we had a series for a little bit, a Where in the World is Amanda, and that was fun. <laughs> but because uh, you do get to do a lot of travel with your job, which is really cool, um, and yeah. Uh, classrooms you're in for a treat Amanda is an amazing photographer and uh, every time I see her pictures I get really jealous and I can feel myself underwater so <laughs> oh that's cool yeah so um so what I'd like to do with you guys is share some of my new photos that um, I've been able to collect right now I'm in not a, the most exotic exciting place but I guess maybe a little bit to some people, um, but I'm back in the U.S. and I'm getting ready to take off to Dominica. And Dominica is down in the Caribbean and it's one of my most favorite places that I go to for work. And uh, I go down every year and I'm able to dive and photograph and work with sperm whales, which are an amazing species of animal. And so I don't think I have any images of them in this particular presentation. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to be able to, to collect some and they fall within the same line of everything that I'm doing with my imagery. And that is trying to show the beauty of the oceans and the different species that are in the oceans and uh, why we need to protect them, uh, the conservation side of things. So there is a, a wonderful organization down there that's working with collecting data and science and researching the species of uh, whales that are down there and they're actually trying to figure out their the way that they're communicating to each other and they're hoping that they'll be able to by collecting this information that maybe one day we'll be able to um, communicate with them so it's a really cool kind of um, work that's going on down there and the imagery that I collect as an underwater photographer helps them promote their work out in the media, um, on television and in magazines and in different outlets and, um, all around the world. So I don't work with them directly, but I give them and I donate my images to them so that, they, that my imagery can help people see what they're doing. So uh, that's just one of the kind of the facets of what makes being an underwater photographer connected to kind of a science side of things. So what I'm gonna do, see if I can get this. I'm gonna share my screen so that you guys can see some pictures. Can you see that? We got it, it's nice and full screen. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of my imagery that I've collected over the last couple of years and talk you through some kind of bullet points of what it means to be an underwater photographer or what's important, the, the different aspects of what's important about being an underwater photographer. So 
my focus in underwater photography is big animals. I love shooting anything that's bigger than me, um, something maybe that's considered an apex predator, which if you don't know what that term means, it just talks about, it's explaining what a predator at the top of the food chain is. Um, and so of course, these guys right here are probably one of the, the highest on the food chain in the ocean, if not the top of the food chain. Um, the And they are orcas. And I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to go up to Norway over the last several years and be able to film these guys and take photographs of them and take other photographers out um, and also production companies. So production company is a group of people or a company that focuses on collecting content that can be used in movies or they create a movie themselves or they use it to, um, and again, like what I was talking about with the sperm whales, um, be able to use it for media and, and uh, still imagery and video content that's able to be used in a whole bunch of different avenues and different respects. And that also includes um, science. So when you're, when you're taking a picture of an animal underwater, you don't want somebody to look at it and say, oh yeah, that's nice, and then move on to the next. You wanna try to make a big impact with your images. So that's always been kind of my fun thing to do. And I have really tried to focus with playing with light. So this is a great hammerhead, and this was shot in the Bahamas. And this was working with another production company and we were making a film on the great hammerheads at night. And this was a different side to the animal. Most of the people that were filming them and shooting them, it was, it was typically during the day. Um, and if it was at night, it was always with images or with lights that were used on the camera as opposed to putting them out and trying different angles and, and changing things up a bit. So we were trying to make an impact with our images and and basically kind of stop people in their tracks so that they could say, whoa, this is something that I haven't seen before. And so the person that's in the in the pic, <clears throat> excuse me, in the picture is the owner of the company. And she works with the sharks on a daily basis. So she's very experienced and she's very knowledgeable. And it, this is all done in a very safe way. And um, she's working with this one particular great hammerhead and we were able to get some imagery and some shots of of this particular species that were that was different from what we had been able to create previously and what we had seen previous previously created something that's really important working as an underwater photographer you need to be able to observe the environment and the animals and your surroundings um, this will enhance and help you get better photographs of the animals that we're diving with. And um, that's really the ultimate goal, right? Is, is that we're trying to create the best possible image that we can. So this is actually, this is a humpback whale and it's a humpback whale calf, which means it's a baby calf or it's a baby whale, sorry. And you wouldn't think it from the image, but it's, it's fairly small for, for whale standards, I guess you can say. And whale calves, especially where this one was shot, which is in Tonga, um, which is in the South Pacific, it, they're very, very curious and they want to come in. They're like kids. So they want to come in and check things out and see what's going on. And so if you hang out and you're very respectful to the animal at the, at the surface and you let the animal come to you, they'll come sometimes right up to you um, like this one did for this particular picture. This is the same humpback whale calf. And if you look at the bottom of the frame of the picture, you can see that mom is sleeping down far below us, maybe 30 feet or so, maybe uh, it's about 10 meters. And she's, she's just hovering down there and watching what's going on and checking things out. And she's resting because um, where she's at, where we're at, she's not feeding. Um, she's there to rest and give birth to the baby calves and or to the baby whales, which are called calves, and and they're just and she's recuperating and and letting the the young calves grow a little bit so that they're able to make a journey 
out of the area when they're a little bit older because when they're first born, they're not able to, to move long distances. So in this scenario, you have the, the, the mother uh, humpback whale down below and you have the calf that's super curious and coming up and checking us out. So we're able to take some pictures um, respectfully and, and at a distance. And this area, a lot of underwater photographers and video videographers come to every year. And we're able to observe the behavior of nursing and of uh, the animals when they're in this particular phase of their lives. And the imagery, again, both the still photos, like a photograph that I take, and the, the video that's collected here is used in all different aspects. Again, with science and research, because we can observe a behavior over and over again, so we can see a pattern to what these animals are doing. Um, it can also be all of the imagery that's collected can be used in films and used to help promote marine conservation, help people to fall in love with the oceans. And it's it's one of kind of the hot spots around the world where people are able to collect this kind of data. So I also work as an underwater photographer with people, not just animals, although People are technically animals too, but different species, but also humans. Um, so it's not just animals that are not just different types of species and animals that are being photographed. There's also underwater photographers that shoot and focus on underwater modeling. So this is another thing that a lot of people are doing recently, which is um, pretty exciting because you can work in all different environments and scenarios and it doesn't have to be just in the ocean these images were actually collected in freshwater in springs and in lakes so there's a whole bunch of different places that you can go to to shoot underwater it can be as long as you have water you're you're good to go the most important thing that i have found as working as an underwater photographer is educating myself um, so this means I went to college for my undergraduate degree, which is in professional photography, but you don't necessarily have to go that route. A lot of underwater photographers are self-educated, they're, they're self-taught. Um, it's a lot of hard work either way. You have to become a very good diver and have the skills of a of a scuba diver or a free diver um, perfected or at least mastered before you want to put a camera in your hands and uh, and then you move into the photography side of things so the the lighting needs to be um, understood and how the camera works need to, needs to be understood and so educating yourself on that on those aspects however whatever channel you decide you want to go down um, is incredibly important. And also educating yourselves about the, the behavior and the species of the animal that you're gonna photograph or that you're gonna be in the water with too. It's, in, it's very important. So this is a silky shark and I shot this in Cuba. And I was on a trip with uh, other photographers that had gone out and I was teaching them about different lighting techniques with uh, shooting a, a big animal. We consider a shark a big animal. I think another aspect to underwater photography is trying to simplify things. So this is actually a pretty cool scenario. This is in Mexico. And if you guys can see, can you see how it looks like just kind of like clouds around the diver and he's, he's swimming through it almost, it, it almost looks like he's swimming in the sky. Well, that's actually a sulfur layer, and it's at the very bottom of a freshwater sinkhole, fresh water versus seawater. So we weren't in the ocean, we were far inland. And this sulfur builds up because of the decay and the, the breakdown of the foliage or the leaves and the trees and the bushes around the sinkhole that fall in and they drop down to the very bottom. 
And it's not very, it's not safe to stay in it very long, but you can move through it. Um, and so we thought it would be pretty cool to go down there and to, to take pictures in it. And there's a lot of scientists and researchers that work primarily in these freshwater sinkholes in Mexico. And they're, they're, they're called cenotes. Um, and they, they there's all kinds of, uh, life down there that's only found in this particular environment. And so bringing back photos um, of this area and, and this type of scenario helps the scientists as well. And it makes for really cool kind of interesting and unique photos, but a very simplified photo too. That, you don't have to have lots of big details in your photos or in your work. It can be a very simple message that you're trying to get across persistence is very important with the work that I do. So most of the pictures that you see are a result of lots of work ahead of time, um, trying to get everything together and figuring out how best to collect the photo or how to capture the photo. This particular photo was shot at sunset and um, I tried for several days at sunset to get this photo, but I wasn't quite getting the camera settings correct and I was getting really frustrated with it. And the key to finally succeeding at capturing this was to see what was going on, see the mistakes I was making, try to fix them and then go back and then try again. Um, that was really important, not giving up. and being persistent in the goal of capturing this photo of these sharks. And this shark is a silky shark. And this was shot in the same place as the other shark that I showed you with the Educate, and um, that was in Cuba. I think the most important thing, again, all of these things are very important, and I'll probably keep saying the most important thing, the most important thing, but very much so, I think, an incredibly important part of anything you do is believing in, in yourself and believing in what you're doing um, and not necessarily having to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. It can, it can be a huge benefit for you. So I love photos of fish butts, I guess. A lot of people call them fish butts, which is kind of silly to some, but from animals from behind. I love the way that the tail looks. I love the way that the lines are. And I've been told since I picked up a camera and started diving that that's a big mistake, that you're not supposed to do that, that it's, a, it's, an, it's something that doesn't translate well. But I love it, and I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing. And so I've continued to believe in what makes me happy and believe that the style or the image that I like is something that is acceptable, and I've continued to shoot in it. So believing in what's what what is something that you that makes you happy um, and believing in yourself and just because everybody else isn't doing it doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing it's if it makes you happy and you're enjoying creating it or capturing it or however you're producing it um, you know go for it and you can really kind of create a specialized part of what you're doing. Uh, no matter what it is, if it's photography or art in some way or a writing style or a dance, it could be anything. But just because everybody else isn't doing it doesn't mean that it's wrong. I think you should continue to do, to do you and collaborate, which means working together with other people um, that inspire you and push you to do your very best and people that you can learn from. I think this has been incredibly important for me in my career. I've been very, very fortunate to be around an incredible network of photographers and divers and scientists and researchers and um, just everyone, business people that have really inspired me to believe in myself and to push me and to give me opportunities that allow me to further my passion in what I'm doing with underwater photography and have allowed an outlet for my ability to help and give back. 
and to work in a way that makes a difference because all of my photography, the main goal that I'm trying to do is to help our oceans and to help the planet um, and to show how beautiful it is. And this particular person is one of those people that I've collaborated with in the past and have worked with and she's an extraordinary person who's done presentations with um, Explore by the Seat of Your Pants and she works with sharks and she works in freshwater caves and she pushes me and inspires me to continue to do the work that I'm doing and to try to make a difference. And along that same line of thinking, what drives me is my passion to help the oceans. So we have to remember that it's very important that you continue to try to do something that makes you happy. Now, the oceans are important to me because, well, for a lot of reasons, but sharks are very important to me. I've loved sharks since I was a little, little kid, maybe kindergarten, first grade. I've always, always loved them. So the thing that drives me the most is my desire to help protect them because right now because of pollution and a whole bunch of changes that are happening in our oceans and on our planet there are a lot of animals in the oceans and outside the oceans that are in trouble and they need our help they need us to be able to protect them so as my job as an underwater photographer the best thing I can do is to share my images, my photographs, with as many people as possible to show how beautiful these sharks are and how beautiful our oceans are. And when hopefully you see images that that touch you or that make you like the things that you're looking at, then you're able to change maybe a direction of, of the way that you're thinking in that in or the way that that person's thinking and maybe they spend more time trying to figure out how they can help too and the more people we have trying to help the oceans um, and protect the oceans and learn about the oceans um, so that would be marine conservationists and researchers and scientists um, the more people we have focused on those issues the better our oceans are going to be the more protection they're going to have and the healthier they may potentially become. So that's important. And then that falls into marine conservation. So this picture is a pretty cool picture. This is an American crocodile. And I shot this photo. I was in the water with this crocodile. And um, it was at a place called Benco Chinchero. And that's in Mexico. It's all the way down at the very bottom of Mexico. And We've been getting in the water with these American crocodiles for several years. And the special thing about these crocodiles and about Banco Chinchero is that it's a marine biosphere. And that means that the area is protected and that there's no fishing that's allowed. People cannot come in and hunt these crocodiles. They cannot hurt them. Um, everything there is protected and regulated and marine biospheres and marine parks um, that are all over the world are incredibly important to the health of our oceans. And so my ability to come in and take photographs of these crocodiles and to be able to share that experience, um, not only with other photographers that I bring there, but also with television shows and movie uh, production companies and magazines um, they this uh, this allows my ability to share and to show how important the these type of areas are because you have thriving healthy um, animals and habitats and environments where the ecosystem is is balanced and it's in very good shape so um, showing something like a person getting in the water with a crocodile, which we do there safely because we have a safety team in place and it's a very specific kind, um, it's a very unique place where the water is very clear and we have experts on hand that know crocodile behavior and know how to do this safely. 
Um, I wouldn't say that you would just jump in the water with any crocodile anywhere. That wouldn't be safe. But when you have a safety team in place and you're with, you're there with experts, people that know crocodiles and know the the place that we're getting into the water with them very well, then it can be done safely. But the the image itself, the photograph that's taken from these places, can make a huge difference because not people aren't used to seeing people in the water with crocodiles so it makes a it makes an impact people notice these types of things or notice these photographs and people always tell you over and over again not to fail don't fail failure is bad i actually think failing is a very good thing because when you fail and you don't let it beat you you don't just stop and walk away you figure out why you failed and you try to change something about that and go back and try to, to beat it or to, to overcome what it is that you failed at before, it can be a very healthy, good thing for you. So these are orcas that I shot up in Norway, the same place as the very first picture I showed you guys. And the very first year I went there, I didn't have the right camera equipment. I didn't have an understanding of their behavior and how cold it was gonna be. So I wasn't prepared with my protection for my clothes. And there were lots of things that I didn't do that ended up making me fail to get a good photograph of them. And when I went home from that trip, I was very sad and disappointed that I didn't get the photos that I wanted to get. And I, instead of letting it beat me instead of letting it make me not try again I allowed that failure to I looked at it and said okay why did I fail and I changed a whole bunch of things um, I changed my camera I changed the kind of stuff that I wore up there to keep me warmer I learned more about the orca behavior and I went back armed with all of those new things and I was able to get in the water and take this picture, which is probably one of my most favorite pictures I've ever taken at this point in my job. And this is two orcas that had come up and if you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's actually, those are fish. There's a big giant bait ball and a bait ball is just a bunch of smaller fish that get together real tight and close formed and they, try to make themselves look like a big animal, like a one big animal, even though there, there's lots, thousands, tens of thousands maybe of, of little ones together. And that's a way that they protect themselves. But um, the orcas and humpback whales and all kinds of different animals come in and they feed on these fish. And so we saw this bait ball and we came up and we, we were able to get some pictures like this and I was really happy with it. So if you fail, don't take that as a sign to just walk away and never try again. Take that as a as step one and figure out what you need to do to change things so that you can go back at it with a better understanding and a and a the more potential to be able to overcome what it is that you had trouble with before. And saying yes to new adventures has been a very good thing for me. So again, this is in Banco Chinchuro. This is American crocodile and I'm in the water with it. And again, I would say, I'll tell all of you guys, don't just jump in the water if you see a crocodile. That's not a smart or safe thing to do. But having a safety team in place and being around experts, we were able to come in and do this. Now, when I the very first time I got offered this opportunity, I was very scared. And I thought maybe this isn't something I wanna do. And I almost said no, but then I, I talked to the people that I was getting in, that I was gonna be going out and, and doing this job for. And uh, I was able to overcome my fears. And I said yes to an adventure that even though it was scary and I was fearful of it, I still decided to go through with it because I was educated and I understood what I was getting myself into. So saying yes to new adventures, no matter what it is, whether it's you're with it, if it's something new, it could be anything. But if you if you learn about it and you're educated on it and you understand it, then I think saying yes is usually a good thing. 
making a connection is very important for people like me uh, in my career. So whether it's a still photographer or a videographer, the most important thing that we have to do is for us to be able to have the person looking at the photo or watching the video connect to the picture that they're seeing. So getting people in the pictures has been really important to me because then you can, if somebody looks at the picture, then they can say, oh, that feels like that could be me there. So this is, this is people diving and photographing great hammerheads in Bimini, which is in the Bahamas, which is just off the East coast of the United States. And the water is very clear and it's beautiful. In this photo, we are able to kind of show the connection between the humans or the people, both underwater and on the boat and the animals that they're there interacting with. And I think the number one most important thing that's been even more than anything else I've told talked to you guys about, and I know I keep saying this, they're all important, but this one very much so is a gratitude or a gratefulness or an appreciation, a, it, being thankful for everything that I've been given and privileged uh, to see and to experience from our oceans and from the people around me. Never lose that. I think it's incredibly important that you always have gratitude. You're always thankful. And as part of that, giving back and paying it forward, um, which means if somebody helps you or somebody inspires you or, or something good happens to you, giving something to somebody else um, or being nice to somebody else or, or giving back or trying to inspire or, or um, assist somebody else. I think those are all very important things. Let's see if I can get, gotta unshare. I think those are all incredibly important things and probably the most important thing, no matter what. There you go, you're on the right track. If you hit the green button, it should bring you back to us. There, there we go. go. Awesome. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for sharing those pointers. And, you know, those are good pointers for an underwater photographer, but I think pretty much all of those apply to being in the classroom too, whether it's not being afraid to fail, make connections, collaborate, uh, being grateful. I think all of those things really translates well to the classroom too. Yeah, of course. That's kind of the nice thing. It's no matter what, I think they're just kind of values that you should have across the board for sure. All right, well, let's meet some classrooms. We're gonna to go to Leamington, Ontario to start. Uh, Mrs. Reeves' class is hanging out with us. Let's turn their microphone on and see how they're doing. No, you're okay. You're good. How are we doing, Leamington? Good. Hi. Hi. Tell your name. Hi. Tell, say what your name is. Hi, my name is Monte, and I was, I'm wondering if your safety team helps you with something. Oh, absolutely. So I most of the things that I go and photograph are sharks or crocodiles or big animals. So if I didn't have a safety team in place, um, I would put myself at risk and then it could potentially, it might turn into something bad. So having experts around or having a safety team around is very, very important to my job. Absolutely. All right, great question to get us started in Leamington. Let's go over now. Mrs. Fletcher's group's hanging out with us. I believe they're in Mount Airy, North Carolina, but you can correct me if I'm mistaken. Let's get your microphone turned on and see how you're doing. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good. Hi, my name is Lexi. Hi, my name is Lexi. Hi, my name is Lexi. And our question for you is, what does a regular week look like for you as far as travel? Ah, so that's a really good question. And a regular week means that it could be anything. Um, my job, because it's so, because I, I travel all over the world and I go different places that maybe one week I have to fly for three days to get to a, a certain spot so that I can photograph, you know, a whale. Tonga, it takes three days just to fly there because you have to, it's so far away from where I'm at. And then you have to take a big plane and then wait and then get on another little plane and then drive for several hours. So the my schedule is is all over the place. It's not that I go to an office and I sit in an office 
all day and then go home and then I have a weekend at home. Um, sometimes I'm gone on the other side of the planet for two, three, four, five weeks. And then sometimes I have big week, big chunks of time, several weeks that I'm, I'm not doing anything. So if you want a job that's very, that's all over the place, then this is the kind of job you want basically. Cause it could be that you're traveling for three days or it could be that you're flying for an hour. You just, you really don't know. But a lot of time is sitting and waiting on boats waiting for the animals to show up or waiting for the right time of day or there's the ocean is different too. So different tides. Sometimes you have to wait for the right time to jump in the ocean. Sometimes you have to wait for weather, weather comes and you can't get out on the boat. So there's, there's more waiting than actual time in the water usually, but yeah, it's, it's all over the place. All right. So you have to be flexible. Very. Bye. I think it's worth it for some of the adventures. Uh, Mrs. Awesome Cops group are hanging out with us in Aurora, Ontario. Let's get their microphone turned on and see how we're doing. How are we doing, Aurora? Hi there, very good. Uh, hi, Amanda. Um, hey. Do you happen to know what are the most damaging forms of pollution to our oceans? Ah, so it's actually, it's not funny. I wouldn't say it's funny, but it's surprising you would think so there's two main culprits right now that we're i am kind of been focusing on with my work number one is microplastics and ghost netting and so microplastic is the plastics that are so small we can't even see it but animals at the very bottom of the food chain are actually eating and ingesting these microplastics and then the animals that are higher up in the food chain they're eating those animals and it's contaminating the animals all the way up the entire food chain, which is causing and wreaking havoc um, on, on, the, the, on everything basically in the ocean. And there is, a, there is a huge challenge in trying to figure out how we filter out these microplastics um, and how we start combating this. That's a, that's a problem. The, the second thing that's probably one of the largest issues, and it's something you'll see more often maybe in the news, is ghost netting. And ghost netting, that term just means that it's a net that's broken loose from a fisherman's lot or some type of line, and it's just floating freely through the ocean. And what happens is marine mammals in particular get tangled up in these. And so you'll see a lot of whales and dolphins and turtles and um, uh, that are entangled in these and it ends up it, it causes them so much difficulties that they they don't always make it they're not always able to to break free of them and so there's actual teams and whole entire um, jobs of entanglement specialists that actually will go out and try to remove these um, these marine animals from from these entanglements and there's a, there's a big movement right now to try to clean the ocean as much as possible of these ghost nets and then actually take the material from the nets itself and recycle it into something that's, that's usable, like um, shoes or different clothes. Um, some skateboards are made, some of the, some decks on skateboards are made from recycled ghost netting. So, there, there's a there's a big movement in that to try to to clear that as well. But those are definitely the two that I see over and over again. All right, and I have an example right here from one of those groups. This is ah. Boreo in Chile. We often heard awesome. from Boreo, and he tells us all about what they do with the plastic. So it's That's good awesome. to get those out of the water and then find a, a use for that plastic. Absolutely. All right, let's check in with Mrs. Olavides' class. They are hanging out with us. <coughs> excuse me, in San Antonio, Texas. Let's get their microphone on and see how they're doing. Oh, actually, you'll have to turn on for me, Mrs. Olavides. I forgot you're Hi. on iPad. Mm -hmm. Hey, Texas. Um, my name is Cami, and oh. my name is Cami, and I had a question. Um, what is the craziest animal you've ever been in the same area with? Oh. That's a very good question. And I have to tell you guys, I was just in San Antonio, Texas, just a couple of weeks ago. So uh, yeah, you guys live in a really cool town. Okay, so the craziest thing, probably 
my mom and dad would probably tell you that the craziest thing I've ever been in the in the water with is a crocodile. Um, but the crocodiles that we get in the water with, they they're they're fairly calm, and we have we have a safety team in place, like I like I talked about, and you know some I did a. Um, I've done a couple of television shoots for Discovery Channel. Do you guys watch Discovery Channel? Yeah, so I would so we did a we did a, a television shoot with them and we had at one point we had five crocodiles in the water around us and we had the the video guys, the guys that were shooting the video for the show um, and they were shooting video of me and I was I was taking pictures of the crocodiles and um, but again, we had a safety team in place. We had people watching the crocodiles from from um, outside the water, and we had people in the water too that were in place to make sure that everything was safe. But that's pr that's probably the the craziest. At least that's what my parents would tell you. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's see, Fallon, Nevada. Um, oops. It's not the right list. There it is. Fallon, Nevada. We have uh, Mrs. Parks Group hanging out with us. Let's get their microphone turned on and steal a question. How are we doing, boys and girls? We're good. Hang on one second. No? Anyone? Anybody have a question? DJ, do you have a question? Hmm? Nobody has a question. <laughs> That's okay. You can always come back right at the end in case one comes up. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Russett's class hang out with us in Ontario, grade fives. How are we doing, grade fives? That's the bell. I think we covered <laughs> just in time to squeeze a question in. Have you ever seen a shark with no fins? Oh, yes. So shark finning is a very sad thing where they where they they cut the fins off and and they leave this they put the shark back in the ocean and then it ends up the shark dies because it can't swim and it needs to swim to, most sharks need to swim to breathe um and it's a very sad thing that's going on and we're trying to change we're trying to change that we're trying to protect sharks from this but unfortunately yes i have seen that and it's a very sad thing to see it's a much more happy wonderful experience to see a shark that's healthy and swimming and m most often they're scared of us and they they come in and we I'm trying to get closer to it and it's wanting to swim away and take off so yeah sharks are my absolute favorite so that's yeah it's a, it's a sad thing to see but we're working towards changing that so we have healthy sharks in our oceans for sure all right so just to check in quickly with uh, our group in Nevada give me a wave at the camera if I, if I should come back before we switch over. Oh, yeah, okay. We're going back to Mrs. Park's group and the microphone is on. Has anything tried to eat you before? <laughs> anything, you know what? It, that's a question I get a lot. It, you know, what? have you ever had a problem with a crocodile or a shark? And honestly, the scariest situation, and I've talked about this before, but the scary, I have had something try to bite me. And it was a little tiny, you know, a clownfish, you know, like Nemo. Yeah. And Nemo, they're, they're so clownfish are very territorial. And so when I, I went up one time and I was trying to take a picture of it and it's anemone and it kept coming out and it would dart and it would hit my hands on my camera and kept biting the back of my hands. It happens a lot. So the scariest, most aggressive animal I've dealt with in the ocean has been a little tiny clownfish. All right. Well, Amanda, I wish we could keep you all afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I know the classrooms will have more questions, but what I was wondering, would you be okay if the classrooms tweeted some questions to you, if they had some more questions after the hangout? Yes, absolutely. And if anybody in any of the classrooms, teachers, students, if you have any questions at all, and I can help in any way, yes, definitely connect through Twitter. And I'll be more than happy to do whatever I can to help to help you pay it forward and to help you with any with any answers that you might need. All right, so I believe it's a cotton photo online, right? Yep, it's a cotton uh, a cotton photo. Perfect. All right. Well, Amanda, it was so good to catch up. It was so good to steal a little bit of your time. I love 
some of the new pictures. I love the orca pictures. Those are so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty lucky to be able to get in the water with those big apex predators, but they're so smart. And I'm sure you see that every time you get into the water. Yeah, very much so. All right. Well, thank you for spending some time with us. I'm sure we'll have you back again soon. And boys and girls, thank you for your questions as per usual. I'm going to turn the microphones on. Go ahead and get nice and loud. Say goodbye and thank you. And then we'll sign off for today. So here we go. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, we've got a few more events coming up. Uh, thank you so much as always. Bye.